The whole process is just full of tips and tricks and it's like a series of smokes and mirrors in order to get the viewer to think or feel or, or expect uh, uh, something that you want them to expect rather than them leading the process. Your, your ability to sort of position these mirrors and spread the smoke sort of gives the it gives the viewer the impression that you're you're leading them down a garden path almost you're, you're leading them down the the route that you want them to be in um, and that's why sometimes you have to just use as many as many mirrors as you can What's happening guys, Dan Debenham here. It's so close to Christmas, I can almost smell it. I can almost smell that turkey. It's so, so close, it's like a week away. But we are still sharing tips and tricks on editing in Premiere Pro. And this tip, this trick, this sort of mirror that I spoke about before, this is the sort of thing that allows you to be that little bit more creative um, with just the minimal amount of stuff that you've got, just taking the footage that you've got and making something more out of it. So this video, shows you how I fake a second camera when I've only got one camera on on the set uh, and we're taking one shot I can get a second shot out of it which looks almost like it's a second camera so let's dive into Premiere Pro and let's have a look how we do that okay so now that we're into Premiere Pro and we've got our clips in there what we can do is quickly just drag our clip onto our timeline and then what we're gonna do is just shorten this clip so that it is in a position where it starts uh, and it's not the preamble bit that I normally do um, to just get myself sorted and ready and as you can see it's just a general clip of me chatting at a desk now it's really important that we remember that when we're doing this clip that we are fully aware of how we've composed our clip and our, our shot and our scene because this 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 sort of uh, tip works much better if you're using the rule of thirds and you're either left or right one of the two um, because obviously you're going to need to show some movement in this clip and this effect if you sat straight in the middle then effectively you're not going to see any of that sort of second camera effect as it were so let's get on with how we actually get into it so what we're going to do is we're going to just highlight the whole clip hit alt and then we're going to drag it out uh, and so we've got two of exactly the same clip. I'm going to get rid of the sound on the first clip because we don't need it. And we've literally just got the, uh, the, sa the same clip twice. What we're going to do now is highlight the second clip. We're going to come across to our effects tab uh, and we're going to type in 3D and we're looking for basic 3D. Now we can do one or two things with that. We can drag it up to our um, uh, effects tab so we can go up to the effects controls and drag it there, or we can drag it straight onto the clip there. Either one, as long as the clip is selected, will work perfectly well. So you can do either one of those, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Once we've got that in place, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna start looking at the swivel section of our uh, 3D basic effect. So we're gonna highlight swivel, uh, basic 3D, we're gonna highlight swivel, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in 180, and you can see from that, it's basically flipped that clip around uh, and effectively now that clip is sort of being looked at from the back. Uh, it essentially, it's exactly the same. It's just they're, they're looking at it from the reverse rather than, it's not a reversed clip, it's a reversed out clip. So it's important to remember that you might encounter issues if there is text in the scene and so on and so forth. Just be aware of that. Uh, give it a try. Sometimes, you know, you can get away with it. Sometimes you can't, but it's important to be aware of that. So next things next, what we're going to do is we're going to drag that clip over the top of the original clip and then where we want it to come in, we're effectively just going to um, bring that clip into play and then where we want it to come in again. Uh, so let's say we take it out there and we bring it back in, say there. And this is just all to show you what, it's going to, what it happens. Now, the next thing we do, once we've got our clip all lined up, because they're the same size clip, obviously, um, we don't have to worry about trying to match them up in for the sound or anything because it's exactly the same clip. All we're gonna do is just lay it over the top. So what we're gonna do now is we're then gonna adjust the clip slightly uh, to, a, to sort of convince the viewer that this is a slightly different camera. So what we can do now is highlight, we've highlighted our clip. We're gonna go to our scale. In my case, I'm gonna zoom in 
to 170 um, and I'm going to bring this down a little bit and I'm going to bring it across here like so um, and I'm just going to bring it back that way a little bit because I want to keep a little bit of this lamp in even though it's in the first shot I still want to keep a little bit of that lamp in because I want to sort of give the viewer the indication we're still in the same place and if we see the crop cropping too tight essentially it's just a straight in crop but what we want is we want us off to the opposite side of our scene to give that sort of view of being a different camera so we're at 1393 by 1631 so we just come to the next step here um, and we just type these in 1393 uh, 1691 like so and then 170 like so and then we basically we're basically done We've essentially got ourselves um, a second camera shot, which basically looks like uh, two cameras, but one is slightly more zoomed in. And it also looks like you've sort of swiveled and looked at the camera because uh, it gives you that sort of newsreader effect, you know, where they sort of look at a different camera and so on and so forth. But because you're at a different side, it, your brain perceives that actually they've, they've already looked at that second camera just before. So they're in time and all that kind of stuff. So it's quite a nifty little effect, basically. So with that, I hope you did find that this was quite useful. It's a really, 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 really quick tip uh, on how to sort of fake a second camera if you're only using one camera or you've only got one camera um, and it just allows you to just add that little bit more of a convincing sort of larger production uh, and be a bit more creative with the shots that you've got uh, even though you're only using one camera. So with that, I will see you guys in the next one, which I think might be after Christmas. So I'll see you then. Peace.